I don't really need to assess the team because I know for sure that this is our bet right. We have been winning that for the past uh, 20 years, let me put it that way. So we'll continue winning, but my problem is what happens at the big picture at the end of the day, having won all this stuff. I know we are going to win. How are we winning? That is best known to me. But I am looking at these guys graduating through the rank and files to the top. The big picture is the main issue. We need to win the World Cup too. We're supposed to have been winning the World Cup, haven't been winning the under 17 for how many years now? If we follow the same procedure in quote, it's a sleeping dog. We allow that dog to lie as us now. So let's just continue and to see at the end of the day how many of them will graduate. Some of them, you know, along the line, graduated up to the big picture, but they don't last. Why? We have not been able to really uh, 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 figure out that plot of why they are not able to play 10, 15 years at 17. 15 years, you are 30, 36, then you are, you are gone. No, we don't know why. We've been, we've been, we've been... Okay. <laughs> Interesting one from Joe Erico there. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, um, if, if I listen uh, correctly. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, I won't go there. I don't want to sound too, um, too uh, cynical right now, but... Um, Nigeria. Can react to what yes, yeah, Nigeria. Four times we've won it. Um, a lot of the times we've not seen these players actually uh, go on uh, to the next uh, level of their career. Uh, I don't know what you think on uh, the main uh, challenges and uh, for Nigeria players that have dominated at this level to actually reach the very, very top. There are few challenges to this, and they are picked in this form. The issue of a cheat that every other person talks about. But I don't want to believe concerning that. My belief is that in transition from under 17 to under 20, it's a different level. And from under 20 to the absolute, a different level. Because training for fun at this level, where skills and individual ability with just about 10 to 15% teamwork <laughs> and uh, some kind of anxiousness on the part of every individual, players, you understand me, comes to play, at the end you might manage to squeeze out something. But when it comes to under 20, it is no longer the issue of 11 friends playing. Science comes into this. The quality, even to the minutest, the quality of food you eat and how you are able to feed yourself even before a match comes into this. How you train, the quality of training that you have scientific training not just covering distance and at the end of the day you have no speed but you have core strength when the muscle is tuned and at the end of the day you can't do anything with it speed agility and quickness then the most important is the mental speed this is developed through education once you don't have this you are not going to pass from training to compete uh, uh, from uh, having fun. training for fun to training to compete at this level then from training to compete to the high performance level. The high performance level, a lot of things comes into it. Example, for almost about six years, Cecilia, Barcelona took everybody by surprise yeah. with their brand of football. Then the science came into it that as we are improving, we look at what you have, we show you that we can do better. Bayern took it over. And since then, we have not been able to collect it from them. So what is responsible for this? Wonderful education to the youth, then more advanced education to the intermediate, then to the senior, a finished education. Wonderful one, advanced one. So that at the end of the day, they're doing everything perfectly. You know, perfection must have to set in at one point in time. And the knowledge that is based on football intelligence must be brought to bear on these young lads. Okay. I think that can actually account for the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Ryan Giggs, Lionel Messi. Messi, that they played for a long time, and they're still at their very, very peak. Exactly. You have Pele. You will produce Ronaldo. You have Maradona. You are going to produce Messi. We have Rashidi Yakini, but we have not been able to produce anybody. What is responsible? Football education. You give them this education, you teach them the tactical principles, the technical principles, then it continues to multiply. You understand me? Before, they see ordinary chicken, the native one. 
Suddenly, I started to see a real chicken. The chicken started to replace the total now. Not talking. You understand me? Now, something they create all these oh, things. Not be just a, not be just a something. You understand me? So this is it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my uh, my last um, question to you, um, uh, Victor Osime, um has been getting all the plaudits uh, mm -hmm. so far in this competition. That you can understand why nine goals already uh, is equal to the record of um, uh, Cinema Pongo, and that was in 2001. And um, surely, I believe he has a major role to play in the final. Mm -hmm. Nigeria uh, will have any chance of actually uh, winning the title? Yes, surely. You expect a striker to be scoring all the time, like we had like we're having with all the big ones, even the junior, at the junior level, at the intermediate level as well. But one bit of truth is always there with what we've ignored yesterday. He was being marked and chased into the corners most of the time until he got that opportunity from that pocket pass that he now slotted the ball and he scored and got uh, the, penalty. The, the penalty that he scored yeah. from as well. Now, against Mali, it's going to be rough and tough. Yes. Those guys, they have better body mass <laughs> they are fast and they are strong. Mm. They look you older, they look older, older too. They look uh, older uh, too, coach. Like, now you talk that on me. I'm asking okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? They're the tall, yeah. they're strong, yes, they're and they're very, very physical. You can see yellow cards and all the kicking and every other thing. Mm. But the Nigerians are very flexible, very sharp, with a lot of agility, a lot of speed and quickness. If we can manage possession with this and we're able to chase them very, very well. Ayo. Yeah. For 90 minutes, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Malians to stop us not to score, then Osimen not to get at least at a goal. If he does not, then Okonkwa and the rest. And we saw what mm -hmm. he came to do yesterday. Exactly. Oh, okay, right. Right. let's just All check right. Nigeria's road to the finals before mm. the Gautier. Their opening game, of course, was against uh, United States. Two goes to nothing. They won that one. Against Chile, 5-1. And against Croatia, they lost that one to one. And, of course, against Australia, it was six goes to nothing. Against Brazil, 3-0. And against, well, Mexico, four goes to do. So, 21 goals they've scored. Conceding how many? Mm. Just five. So, that's a huge one for Nigeria. Of course, it's a boost. Great boost for them to go ahead and of course beat Mali and come home with the trophy because we just want to celebrate all these victories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we hope that is definitely what will happen at the end of the day. Oh, I guess we have to leave it at that, uh, Coach Undukog uh, Bali. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, and we do hope that uh, when or uh, if we do win. Yeah, that's more like <laughs> okay, I want to use when this time around. When we do win, okay, yes. join us on Monday. Okay, you'll be celebrate. with us again. To celebrate. Yes, if, if I'm chance, if you invite me, surely I will be sure, here. Sure, sure. Thank you sure, very sure. much for coming Thank in. Thank you so the much program. again, Coach. Okay. okay. We'll switch over now to five aside game. What's mm. all about Futsal Nigeria? Of course, they're trying to actually organize a corporate a challenge uh, tournament. It's going to be in uh, South Africa. The, first of all, they're starting with Nigeria, and this is going to actually help to develop the game so much in the country. But remember that for Nigeria, we definitely. For Nigeria, we are to be playing uh, Tunisia in December, but we still don't have a team yet. But we're trying to get corporate sponsorship and all that. Maybe with more championship, Nigeria gets to have you know, a team that would definitely want to play Tunisia in December. Let's just get to listen to Moses Owanze talking about Futsal Nigeria. <laughs> 